Now in question number six, it says distinct numbers are arranged in an n cross n rectangular table with m rows and n columns so that in each row, the numbers are in increasing order from left to right. And in each column also, numbers are in increasing order from top to bottom. Now such a table is called a sorted table. Now each location of table containing a number is called a cell. And we index cell of the table with the pair i, j. Now obviously the smallest entry will be sorted in this cell 1, 1. Now the first question is, Assuming mn is greater than or equal to 3, where in an mn sorted table can the third smallest entry appear? Now, if we consider this mn matrix, now the smallest item will be in 1, 1. So, this is suppose element a1. Now, the second smallest, it can be either here or here. So, the second item, it can be either in cell. 1, 2 or it will be in 2, 1. Now, if we look at this third one, in case if second one is here, then we can place this third one either here or in this cell. So we have this choice either 1, 3 or 2, 1. And if A2 is in this cell, then this third element, it can be in this cell or in this cell. In that case, it will be this 1, 2 or 3, 1. So third smallest element, it can be in any one of these cells. 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 2 or 2, 1. So that's your 1A. Now this B part is for any K greater than or equal to 4 satisfying MN greater than or equal to K where in an mn sorted table can the kth smallest entry appear now suppose this kth smallest it is in the cell ij so we have this cell ij where the smallest element k is located now, if we look at all the elements in this rectangle, then number of elements in this rectangle, it is given by i into j. So this k smallest element, it will be in this cell ij if k is greater than or equal to ij. So the location of this k smallest element is any cell ij where k is greater than or equal to ij. Now, the second question is given an m cross n sorted table. Consider the problem of determining whether particular number y appears in the table. Now outline a procedure that inspects at most m plus n minus 1 cells in the table and then correctly determines whether or not y appears in the table. Now briefly justify why your procedure terminates correctly in no more than m plus n minus 1 step. Now if we look at this m cross n matrix. We have m into n cells. So what we'll do is we'll begin with this cell, which is 1n. We'll compare the value in this cell with y. And suppose this value is a 1n. So we'll compare it with y. So we have three possibilities. Either a1n will be equal to y or a1n, it will be greater than y or a1n will be less than y. Now if a1n equals y, we are done. Our search terminates. Now if a1n it is greater than y, then everything in this last column will be greater than y and it can be eliminated. And if a_in is less than y, then everything in this first row can be eliminated. 
So what we'll do is we'll keep repeating this process. Now suppose in this case a1n is less than y. If it is less than y, we can eliminate this first row. Now we'll begin inspecting this. to n or if a1n is greater than y then we have eliminated this entire column we will begin inspecting this element which is 1 n minus 1 so at each inspection we are going to eliminate either one row or one column so if we repeat this process then after after n plus n minus 1 inspections, either we have found the location of y or we have eliminated all the rows and columns if y does not appear in the table. Now part 3 is considered an m cross n table which might not be sorted. An example is given below. Now it says obtain table b from a by rearranging the entries in each row so that they are in sorted order. So if we have to sort this a along the rows, it will be 24, 33, 46, and this is 92. Here will be this 8, 25, 26, 37, and here will be this 22, 40, 49, and here will be this 81. Now we'll sort them along the column. So it will be this 8, 22, 24, 25, 33. 40, 26, 46, 49, 37, 81 and 92. So these are our tables B and C. Now fourth part is show that for any n cross n table A, performing the two operations from part 3 results in a sorted table C. Now suppose we have taken any m cross n table a and we have performed both the operations b and c and this is the table we get after performing operation b followed by this operation c now suppose this is your jth column and we have another column which is k and k is less than j and suppose this is a higher throw and this cell is ij and this cell is i k. Now, if you look at these first i numbers in this column j, they are sorted because we get this table c when we perform sorting along the column. So, all these elements they are sorted. So, whatever element we have in 1j will be less than element in 2j it will be less than element in 3j and it will be less than element in ij. So in the same column, any ij, it will be greater than or equal to any sj that is within the same column where s varies from 1 to i. Now each of these i elements they are bigger than some element in column K because they have come from table B and table B is row wise sorted. Now in table C, if we look at this column K, then there will be at least one element which is in row R1 which is greater than or equal to I for which there is a corresponding element in row R2 and Jth column which was in the same row of B as this element and since they were horizontally sorted then basically r1k will be less than or equal to r2j 
So from here we can say this element ij will be greater than or equal to element sj in the same column and it will be greater than or equal to rk which was in the same row as b and since this r it is greater than i it will be greater than or equal to this ik. So that means all the entries along the row and along the column they are sorted. So this table, it is a sorted table.